Society and the Individual We have talked at length of individual rights, but what, it may be asked, of the rights of society? Don't they supersede the rights of the mere individual? The libertarian, however, is an individualist. He believes that one of the prime errors in social theory is to treat society as if it were an actually existing entity. Society is sometimes treated as a superior or quasi-divine figure with overriding rights of its own, at other times as an existing evil which can be blamed for all the ills of the world. The individualist holds that only individuals exist, think, feel, choose, and act, and that society is not a living entity, but simply a label for a set of interacting individuals. Treating society as a thing that chooses and acts, then, serves to obscure the real forces at work. If in a small community ten people band together to rob and expropriate three others, then this is clearly and evidently a case of a group of individuals acting in concert against another group. In this situation, if the ten people presume to refer to themselves as society, acting in its interest, the rationale would be laughed out of court. Even the ten robbers would probably be too shamefaced to use this sort of argument. But let their size increase, and this kind of obfuscation becomes rife and succeeds in duping the public. The fallacious use of a collective noun like nation, similar in this respect to society, has been trenchantly pointed out by the historian Parker T. Moon. When one uses the simple monosyllable France, one thinks of France as a unit, an entity. When we say, France sent her troops to conquer Tunis, we impute not only unit but personality to the country. The very words conceal the facts and make international relations a glamorous drama in which personalized nations are the actors, and all too easily we forget the flesh and blood men and women who are the true actors. If we had no such word as France, then we should more accurately describe the Tunis expedition in some such way as this. A few of these thirty-eight million persons sent thirty thousand others to conquer Tunis. This way of putting the fact immediately suggests a question, or rather, a series of questions. Who were the few? Why did they send the thirty thousand to Tunis? And why did these obey? Empire building is done not by nations, but by men. The problem before us is to discover the men the active, interested minorities in each nation who are directly interested in imperialism, and then to analyze the reasons why the majorities pay the expense and fight the war necessitated by imperialist expansion. The individualist view of society has been summed up in the phrase, Society is everyone but yourself. Put thus bluntly, this analysis can be used to consider those cases where society is treated not only as a superhero with super rights, but as a supervillain on whose shoulders massive blame is placed. Consider the typical view that not the individual criminal, but society is responsible for his crime. Take, for example, the case where Smith robs or murders Jones. The old-fashioned view is that Smith is responsible for his act. The modern liberal counters that society is responsible. This sounds both sophisticated and humanitarian, until we apply the individualist perspective. Then we see that what liberals are really saying is that everyone but Smith, including, of course, the victim Jones, is responsible for the crime. Put this baldly, almost everyone would recognize the absurdity of this position. But conjuring up the fictive entity, society, obfuscates this process. As the sociologist Arnold W. Green puts it, it would follow, then, that if society is responsible for crime, and criminals are not responsible for crime, only those members of society who do not commit crime can be held responsible for crime. Nonsense this obvious can be circumvented only by conjuring up society as devil, as evil being, apart from people and what they do. 
The great American libertarian writer Frank Chodorov stressed this view of society when he wrote that society are people. Society is a collective concept and nothing else. It is a convenience for designating a number of people. So too is family or crowd or gang or any other name we give to an agglomeration of persons. Society is not an extra person. If the census totals a hundred million, that's all there are, not one more. For there cannot be any accretion to society except by procreation. The concept of society as a metaphysical person falls flat when we observe that society disappears when the component parts disperse, as in the case of a ghost town or of a civilization we learn about by the artifacts they left behind. When the individuals disappear, so does the whole. The whole has no separate existence. Using the collective noun with a singular verb leads us into a trap of the imagination. We are prone to personalize the collectivity and to think of it as having a body and a psyche of its own.